Here, here we are in Bristol at the Prenny Bronze Centre, and I'm going to talk to the beautiful Jessica Richards, Thank who's, you. Written a, who's written an amazing book called Topic of Cancer. And today is the second time I've heard her speak. And today um, you've enhanced your talk now. I think the first time when I heard you must have been two years ago, was it? No, it was, it was April last year, April 2013, last year, yes. God, it seems like I've known you forever. I know, I have that effect on people. <laughs> Anyway, Jessica, you've had an amazing journey, but you've decided to do it yourself, take control of your life when you were diagnosed with, with breast cancer. Yes. And um, can you just give me a little bit of a hint on how you, how you, what was it in you that made you want to really take control of it? I think because of the way I was brought up, um, we, we were often homeless, potless, and it seems to me, and especially in those days, I was brought up in the 50s and 60s, that um, all of our lives were being decided, all the decisions were being made by administrators. So you have rights in theory, you don't actually have any rights in practice. Yeah, there was always so right. some administrator making decisions. So I have a bit, a bit of an aversion to that. When you get into the, the health or disease industry, it's very similar. In fairness, it's because they're dealing with a huge number of people. So it's very difficult to individualise treatment. Yes. So you have to individuate yourself, otherwise your decisions will be made by administrators, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And that's just not my style. No, so that was really amazing. So you, you had something born in you that w was not going to follow a particular path. No, no. And also, I, I'm used to working, my profession is working with uh, chief executives, senior executives on personal development and leadership um, development. So it was natural for me to not to talk to administrators and other people. I want to go straight to the person who's going to be doing the surgery, yeah. rather than speaking to other members of staff, which is no disrespect to them, but I'm used to dealing with the, the person in yeah, charge, so to speak, yes. or the person who's in charge after me. <laughs> and it was so, so amazing. I mean, what, what you identified there is quite... People get diagnosed with, with breast cancer and their brain goes to jelly. And you said, oh, my, has my brain gone to jelly? No, it's not gone to jelly. I'm going to... Yeah, well, it, the thing is, it's not just breast cancer. When people have a shock of any kind, the, the military, for example, are trained to deal with huge amounts of shock and unexpected things happening and emergencies, and they are trained to deal with that, and it's called discipline. Mm -hmm. And they train discipline because you can't train courage. And because when you have a shock like that, under ordinary circumstances, if you have no discipline, which you wouldn't because you're not used to getting diagnosed with cancer all the time, no. then naturally we go into a state of shock, which is fight or flight. And because of that, mentally, we're not able to function at our best. But at the same time, we're expected to immediately begin to make some very complex and critical decisions, probably the most complex and critical decisions of our lives. Yes. So to me, it made common sense that because I'm not thinking straight, I need some time for this to filter through in order for me to make some rational inquiries. And then and you evaluate. wanted to, you, 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 you um, interrogated your surgeons and oncologists and found no, more I to interviewed. Speak. In, interviewed sorry. I interviewed. No, I don't interrogate no, any you... more than you're interrogating me. Yeah? <laughs> no, no. Um, I interviewed um, yeah. several because... because you wanted to learn, you wanted to get information, so you had information so you could make it's up your mind. It's because I was, I had the most important project in my life to handle which was my life. And I needed to be very careful about picking the right team members because this is a long-haul situation. Mm -hmm. Cancer isn't a short sprint. If you ask Dr Andre Young-Snell in Brighton at the Vision of Hope Clinic, he'll always say, cancer's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And he's absolutely right. And so whoever was going to be in my team were going to be around for the longer term, and I was making sure I was interviewing people and choosing carefully because I had the most important project that I'd ever had to handle. Yes, yes, it's amazing. Well done. <laughs> Today, actually, you spoke about hope. And then I think later on, 
you 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 uh, you one point you got to a stage where you thought, hang on, I don't want to carry on, and you were near saying, you know, I'm going to give up. Uh, and what you said was that um, you kind of didn't didn't matter. It didn't matter what happened. And there's an interesting quote about hope, and that is when hope disappears from a man's or a person's uh, arena, then they are much more focused. So there's a, something a little bit dodgy about hope. If you're hoping, but when you get rid of that hope, you're actually focused right to the target. Yeah, it, it was a two-way thing, really. It wasn't that I gave up hope. I just lost momentum because I, I lost any reason for continuing, not because I was depressed and I was going to give up and all the rest of it. I have never given up on anything in my life except for a conscious reason to give up. So it wasn't that I just, oh, I'm going to give up, I can't cope anymore. It's nothing to do with that. It's just I ran out of reasons and I found I was working myself to death to earn the money, to keep myself alive, to work myself to death. And it just wasn't... I didn't want to spend what was left of my life doing that. There's so many people in that conundrum, isn't there? The Absolutely, moment? but especially if you're doing um, uh, an integrated or alternative approach to cancer because you have to self-fund it. So I've been self-funding my own private treatments for seven years and that's a huge financial burden on someone. And when all the other elements and things that had happened in my life at the time, I just kind of ran out of steam and thought, you know what, I'm not going to swear, but... I've had enough of this. This is not doing it for me anymore because mm. th there wasn't enough in it for me. No, no. What, what, at what point did you start to write your book? Because Jessica's written this book called Topic of Cancer. The Topic of Cancer, yes. An inspired and practical guide that will help you take control when faced with cancer. Yes, and, and if will. you want to take control, you've only got to look at this lady here. She's <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> well, I, I started to write the book probably when I was within the first year of having cancer and when my mother was diagnosed the only reason it was a great project for me I'd never written a book before I didn't even know if I could write a book but also it just gave me something to do because people kept asking me stuff as though I, I knew things I think I just give the impression I know things I don't know what it is and I kept trying to explain, well, you know, I'm just another cancer patient. I'm not but an expert on this. you do know this. things. That's, well, that's, I do at the it. end of the day. You do know things. Yeah. My mother always said to me, you're so irritating, you're just a know-all. And I said, <laughs> I know, but now I'm a professional know-all. <laughs> but so what happened, I wrote the book that I was looking for when I was diagnosed. I just wanted just a practical manual, blow-by-blow -blow account to get me started because... Yeah. People were saying, oh, look at this website, or read this book, or read that. And you'd have to read, you know, a whole book to find a couple of things that were relevant. And I thought, look, I just want to know, what sort of questions should I be asking when I go to see my consultant? Yeah, yeah. it's really basic yeah. stuff, Yeah, what are it? the ten basic things I should start eating and drinking, and what are the ten basic things I should stop eating and drinking? Yeah. You know, and... What, what are the ten most important aspects of lifestyle should I be taking into account now? Everything like that, what are the 10 things I should be doing straight away? Or what are the 10 questions I should ask myself? Mm. Now I've just been diagnosed with cancer. Just straightforward stuff. So in the end, I thought, well, I'll write it in the blooming self. And that's what I did. And it's been all over the world now. <laughs> Amazing. And is your book still in print? It's still in print. It's about to come out of print um, in the not too distant future because I'm writing the update now since right. I've um, used the black salve. But the, uh, I was explaining earlier, the black salve in itself um, is not a treatment for cancer as such. In my understanding, you need all the rest of the stuff to get yourself fit and healthy in order to deal with the tumour. The yes. same as any other form of cancer yeah, you, treatment. Yeah, as you so eloquently pointed out, the body can heal itself. Yes, it can. You've just got to learn how to give it the right things to sure, do. Sure, and even if you're having surgery or whatever treatment you choose, you still yeah. need to give your body what it requires to yeah. be in the best possible shape to yeah. deal with those circumstances. Even if it's a cold. Well, absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, that's really great. So... Um, your, is it on Amazon at the moment, your book? Yes, it is on Amazon or from my website, uh, jessicarichards.co.uk or you can get it from Amazon, right, The Topic brilliant. of Cancer. Yeah, well, I, I can certainly recommend that uh, people 
get that it will help to empower you that's what we need to do that's yeah, what it's you all did, it is it's just it? a you... basics thing and yeah. i'm seven years on now seven years on the 11th of may this year so a couple of months to go yeah and you know i'm as fit as a flea yes well it's quite interesting you you were not promoting any kind of necess- necessarily on any alternative pro- um, no. procedures or or treatments or anything you you were quite happy to use whatever thing whatever yes. you could find yes it'll be helpful to you absolutely the book's written for anyone who's been diagnosed with cancer or for their friends and family because there's chapters in there for friends and family too i don't necessarily advocate alternative treatments i'm very pro and integrated approach yeah but the thing i'm most interested in is for people to have access to the information so that they can make informed choices for themselves yeah. and that's what's not around isn't it although it's difficult we're here at the yes to life conference which is started by robin daly and he's yeah. he's gradually beginning to get a that's life. a fantastic charity for, for that aspect as well and there are a couple of others out there doing the same as well and uh, but really it should be within the nhs you know you should go to your be able to go to your gp and have access to all of this other aspects of an integrated approach to any kind of disease not just cancer no that's right and that's the only way you can be empowered because if you don't have the information how can you make a decision exactly how can you make an informed decision and know that's the best one for you at the time yeah yeah so um you 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 really gave us quite a insight into all the sort of things that have happened in your life whilst this was going on as well oh god so yeah. you know you had to cope with the death of your father who was very supportive and i'm a mother and your mother as well um uh, and uh, i think you said you, you your partner disappeared but well he didn't disappear we agreed to separate we, we, it was a mutual, mutual thing, thing but um yeah after 11 years we we'd known each other nearly 20 years yeah but you've got another partner now no no not yet no, I'm, st- I'm still available. Still available. <laughs> no, actually, I, I'm very happily single. I've always enjoyed living on my own, and most of my adult life I've actually lived alone. Right, OK. So I'm a very happily single person, which doesn't mean that I don't date, so you're still in with a chance. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and cheap, because I don't drink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, there you you've heard it here now first on natural health radio right um so what's next then with you uh, jessica you're st- are you still f- you're still f- no, you're not you no. one thing you actually said was you're not fighting your body you're not fighting no. cancer you don't believe in that idea no 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 what, you're empowering your body to i'm just giving my body what it requires as far as i can understand it yeah. in for it to heal itself because our bodies are self-healing mechanisms yeah so you, you give your body what it requires, the nutrients, exercise, and environment that it requires, and it will flourish. Just like a plant, a plant will tell you if it's happy or not. It will. You, you've only got to look at it. Yeah. So your your next book, the updating of the book, is going to cover the the last part of your treatment, which was the using black cell. Black self. Yeah. Yeah. And that was quite an interesting. It was. Month and or and two, was to it? cut and a long it. story short, it it it, it actually. The, the, what the salve does, it breaks down the coating on the tumour and exposes it to the immune system. Then your immune system goes in and does what it knows how to do, which is kill the tumour, yeah. which it did. My my body then pushed the tumour out of the breast and I gave half of that to my consultant in a histology pot of formaldehyde. It was analysed. I have the histology report and the accompanying letter which states that um, what had once been a tumour has been destroyed by the treatment and there was only necrotic tissue mm. that was there. That's absolutely marvellous. And, of course, you were supported. All th- you, 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 had, you had sufficient strength and you got all these oncologists and people around you who actually did support you and, and provided you um, with... I went through that entirely alone, actually, because I didn't tell too many people. I didn't know enough about it and I, I knew I was going to be in a very vulnerable situation going through that and I literally just had to do it behind a locked door. Right. I told my consultant what I'd chosen and decided to do because he's, my, he's been my consultant for a few years now mm. and uh, it's only ethical that he knows what I'm doing at any given point in time yeah. because he's a member of my team, as is my GP. Mm. So... In do that you, sense, he was informed. 
Yeah. Do you think you were lucky with the people that you had there that were happy to let you do this, or do you think you were just strong enough to... Nobody let me do anything. I chose you to, to you, do what you I were, did. You were strong enough, uh, you know, when they said, oh, we want you to do, have chemotherapy and radiotherapy, you, you were strong enough to say, hang on, oh, this is not going to be for me. Yeah, I don't think it's luck. It's just a matter of knowing that we actually have a choice. Because people have said to me afterwards, oh, at least you didn't have to have chemo. And I'd say, nobody has to have anything. No. They offer, and you can choose whether it's right for you at the time or whether it isn't. Yeah. But yeah. we need to be able to, make the, to have access to the information in order to make the relevant choice for ourselves. I know, also, you said you were very sensitive, and when, when they mentioned chemotherapy, you had this funny feeling... Yeah, my body, it's a bit like a divining rod. It is very sensitive to things, and which is a good thing and a bad thing. And um, when they first mentioned uh, chemotherapy, I just felt this, this like, um, shaking within my chest. A bit like a divining rod would shake. And I wasn't scared or anything outwardly, but I just felt like a repulsion. And then when I actually went to the hospital and discussed it, it was absolutely massive. It was almost rocking me backward and forward. Mm. And I, I knew from that that every, every cell, every fibre in my being was repulsed by the idea. Of, of chemotherapy? Yes, for me at the time. That's absolutely incredible. Have, have you met on your journeys anybody else that have told you they've had that feeling? Because I'm sure you've met. To lots be of honest, people. I've never asked because it's not it's not not exactly an icebreaker, is it? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's 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 something else. I mean, people might have felt that. Some people and, and they are sensitive thought, Hang to on, things. Yes. What, what's happening? I don't know. And, but you were clever enough to to realise what I was think, going on in your. But body. anybody that experiences something like it leaves you in no doubt. It's like when you walk in somewhere and you might experience the hair standing up on the back of your neck. Right. You don't need to be clever to recognise that. It's a real primitive, basic response it is. to a life-threatening situation. Yeah. And that was with me. It was a real primitive response to my body just saying, no, 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 don't, don't go in that area. Yeah. I think that's incredible. So maybe in future, when you have, have meetings with people and talk to them, that's something you can... That's an did interesting you, aspect. Yeah, I haven't thought like of this, that. You know, what do you think? Because there are so many people, and I come into more contact with more and more people now who, who are seeking a change, a different, a different kind of route. Yeah, I, I, I think. Well, I think we need an integrated approach, and a lot of medics would prefer that as well. It shouldn't all be down to them, and with their limited um, treatments that they have, it's just not right. It's not fair on anybody. Yes. And especially when they know from experience there are other treatments that could help that person. As well as, yeah. but I think as far as the, your body being sensitive and getting sort of intuition like that, most people are so overwhelmed with fear and confusion, it will be hard to know right. what kind of response your body's getting at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was just very pronounced. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Right. Um, You've run out of steam again, I know. <laughs> night after <laughs> night, it's the same old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, uh, there is one other thing. I, I work with another lovely You've lady. gone all red. That's exactly the colour of the new <laughs> lipstick I was going to get. <laughs> That's my Belisha Beacon look. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I work with a lovely lady who's an animal healer. And yeah. um, I, I, I go and um, we do like a guided meditation the first Tuesday of every month. Yeah. And um, did you do any meditation and things like yeah, that? Yeah, I've done meditation for years. Yeah, so that, Very important. you think that, that helps you through as well? Absolutely. And you shouldn't do it just because you've got cancer. It should. It, it's something that is very valuable as a daily process. Yeah, so this anyway. is trying to get rid of the stress because you know, cancer is love stress. Meditation is more about a lot more than just getting rid of stress. Meditation enables one to experience the, the quietness that is within, which is the truth about us. And within that, when your mind is quiet and your emotions are quiet, you can set an intention that will take root. Mm. Otherwise, it's like trying to set an intention on stormy seas. It's, it's not going to take root. But when it's still and calm, you place an intention in that and it's going to go to the bottom and take root. So it's living in the now. 
Absolutely. I've got a lovely friend called um, Pete Cohen, who's a sort of a, a great guru of trying to help people, and he talks about the duck. Everybody's got this duck in their head that is they're born with, and their parents feed it, and it's go, it's going that ducky sort of noise, or not the quacking, but the dibbling noise. Mm-hmm. And he says, "No, we what, don't want to talk about quacks, do we?" No, no. Uh, and what he says is, uh, uh, "You have to spend your life trying to shut the duck up." <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't even look at it that way. It's not the no. case of shutting anything up. It's just a case of letting it go. Yeah. So being quiet. Yeah, what you resist persists. You can't deliberately try and shut something up any more than you can resist cancer. You no. just go towards health. And that, to me, is the most important mental aspect of it, is you set an intention to be cancer-free or to recover, and then you behave accordingly. Right. So actions speak louder than words. You have to behave like yeah. a healthy person. And uh, a, a big part of your behaviour was changing your diet, presumably. I adapted my diet. I had a pretty good diet anyway. I just adapted it and uh, really focused on being anti-cancerous. Yeah. Yeah. Tremendous. No more minstrels for me. (laughs) (laughs) No more minstrels. Not even in the gallery. In the gallery? Well, you know, the minstrels gallery. Oh, right, yeah. (laughs) Lovely, you're going back some. (laughs) <laughs> You're anyway, even older than me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jessica, it's absolutely marvellous that you agreed to come and have a little chat with me. It's a pleasure. And um, I think it's incredible what you've done, and you're obviously full of energy and vim, vim and vigour and, and linseed oil. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to go on to greater things, and I really do wish you well. Thank you. And um, I'm sure everybody you speak to and everybody's life you touch will be enhanced as Thank you, I appreciate that. And and thanks for asking me and inviting me to this interview and for being here again and for supplying your brilliant linseed products, which I rely on every month. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. Thank you.